Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is how we can use Azure Monitor workbooks with our Azure Logic App Standard Telemetry that we emit to Application Insights. Let's go. All right, so a few weeks ago I had announced on this channel and then also a blog post on Tech Community about Application Insights enhancements for Azure Logic App Standard and this is currently in public preview. And as a reminder, this is an opt-in feature. We won't break any existing telemetry feed. Rohitha, who is an engineering manager on the Azure Logic Apps team, has put together an Azure Monitor workbook template that you can use to consume and visualize your application insights data that's been emitted from Azure Logic Apps standard. So this is pretty important for ICE customers as they move their workloads from ICE over to standard and they may be using the legacy solution around OMS. And now as they move those workloads, being able to enable App Insights and then use the new schema and then this workbook will certainly help in that regard. Now, there might be some future opportunities for consumption, no promises, but do give us our, your feedback if this is something that's interesting for you and if there's something that we can do similar to this around for consumption-based workloads, do let us know. And the best part of this approach is that this is fully customizable. So it's a template, it's something you can tweak, you can enrich, you can enhance, you can combine it with other data sources and make it your own. So do feel free to go ahead and do so. And uh, yeah, show us, show us what you come up with. I'm gonna give you a demo in a few minutes, but just thought I would just highlight some of the core capabilities of this workbook. So as you can see, we've got an Azure Monitor workbook and we've got essentially what looks like a report. And as part of that report, we have different filters. So we can filter on the subscription, we can filter on the application insights instance, we can filter on the logic app and we can filter on time range. And then beyond that, we can then break it down into workflow name, uh, status of the executions. And if we ever want to go ahead and query the client tracking ID, we certainly can go ahead and do that as well. So the idea is you go ahead, you select your applicable values, and then you go ahead and you will uh, basically, you know, explore your data, right? So you can go ahead and look for a particular run ID. If there's one that's aired, you'd be able to go ahead and see that. Uh, from there, you can go ahead and click on view, which will take you to the run history for that specific run. Uh, we also have the ability to resubmit. So if you click on resubmit, we'll give you the ability to go ahead and do that. As you click on a, a workflow run, you're then gonna be able to see the related actions for that specific run. And once again, if you wanna drill down and get more details, you can do so. We've got track properties being captured here as well. And we also below this, and you'll see this in the demos, we also have sections for dependencies and exceptions as well. So this is just sort of the, the high level tour and uh, we'll see more details in the demo itself. Now, to make all of this work, we've got a template. And so I'll include this link inside of the video description. What you'll do is you'll go ahead and navigate to this link. You'll see a JSON document like this. Go ahead, hit Control A, copy all of the contents of this. And then you'll go ahead and do a custom deployment for that specific template and we'll provision this workbook for you. Now I'll do that in the demo and I will show you step by step how all of that works and then we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the solution itself. All right so here's our ARM template. We're going to just go ahead and copy this URL. Once again you'll find that inside the description for this video. Then let's head over to home here and we can go ahead and just uh, search for custom deployment. And then we should see deploy a custom template. So here what we can do is click on build your own template in the editor. We're going to make this quite easy. Remove what you see there. Then go ahead and paste the contents of that file. So just go ahead and do a control A come back and paste it. From here, we'll be able to go ahead and click on save. 
and then naturally we're going to be prompted to provide our subscription, resource group, and our region, etc. So I'll go ahead and do all of that and then we will continue. Okay, I've populated these values. Now let's go ahead and review and create. Okay, this will just take a few seconds. I'm going to pause the recording. Okay, it's now complete. It really took like five seconds. So let's go ahead and click on the resource. Okay, it should load. If you find that it's just spinning and spinning, just hit refresh on your web browser and come back to it and you should be good. So now we can open workbook with Azure Monitor. And here we're going to need to go ahead and configure our base information. So our subscription, our App Insights instance, our Logic App, and our time range. Okay, so I've configured those values. Uh, we can see that I've got a series of runs here that have taken place over the past seven days, which is the current filter. And so this looks pretty awesome. Now, these are, I can filter on status. So, you know, if I did want to filter on running, failed or succeeded, I, I certainly would have the ability to do that. Uh, what I've got here is just succeeded. So let's go ahead and uh, click on, let's say, click on view here. This will take me to the run history for that particular execution. And there you go. We can see that that had run. And we can hit the back button and, uh, and head back. If we wanted to resubmit, we can go ahead and resubmit. So this is going to be the resubmit functionality, much like you see in the portal today. Uh, this isn't going to be like a repair and resubmit, but we're basically able to go ahead and just re-trigger that event based on the previous run. Now let's go ahead and click into one of these particular workflows. When we do, we can see the related actions that show up. If we've got track properties, we also see that. And we can see some additional details as well about that specific action. So some of these experiences that you've you know, seen elsewhere that we're able to just go ahead and pull in. Now let's take a look at another scenario. Because if we scroll down here, we're gonna see like there's the dependencies we also have exceptions as well. So I'm going to just select a different workflow. I've got one that is a parent-child uh, workflow. So I can uh, call out to a child workflow over HTTP. So let's just go ahead and select one of these runs. Then here we've got the related actions that exist in the parent. But if I want to then go ahead and see what's going on with the child, I can go ahead and click on that HTTP. And now I'm going to go ahead and see the dependency for that specific event. And we can see we've got this child workflow that is being called. And then once again, if we want to go ahead and check out more details, we can. Now, another scenario we've got is errors. So let's go ahead. I've got a prescribed sort of solution here, request response workflow exception. So here we've got a couple workflows that have failed. Let's click on one of them. Then we're going to see our actions. We see we've got an issue with a compose. And then if we go ahead and select on that, we'll be able to get more details about the exception for that selected action. So what's pretty cool about what Rohith has done here is he's really enabled this drill down experience, right? Start with your run, then get into your actions, then get into your dependencies, then get into your exceptions. And so it does give you a fair amount of fidelity as you go ahead and look at these different uh, you know, lenses, look through the different lenses itself. So that's pretty cool. Uh, certainly if you want to edit these, you know, go ahead and click on edit. You can see exactly what Rohitha did to build these, tweak them, do what you need to do. Uh, if you're happy with the experience, go ahead and save it, save the workbook, and then you've got the ability to come back to it and uh, come back to it in the state that you left it, which is, is obviously pretty awesome. So shout out once again to Rohitha for putting this together. Uh, it's pretty awesome, and uh, if folks have any sort of feedback, do let us know. Thanks. So that concludes another episode on the channel. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. And uh, if you're obviously on YouTube, likes, comments, subscribes, always welcome. Thank you. Bye.